Welcome to Wrestling Fandom and the new series of The Story Of. And today I am here for the story of D'Lo Brown. By the end of this instalment, I hope to have educated you more on arguably one of the most underrated stars of the Attitude Era. At the time, before it was known as WWF, World Wrestling Entertainment's Attitude Era was chocked full of characters and performers who will live forever in the annals of sports entertainment as some of the most beloved and entertaining of all time. Most were iconic figures who will one day take their place among the greatest professional wrestlers ever in WWE's Hall of Fame. Others were over-the-top characters whose gimmicks were so absurd that fans have no choice but to remember them. As is the case in any line of sport or entertainment, there are those who flew under the radar, never really enjoying the recognition they deserve for their hard work and dedication, let alone the quality performances they turned in. D'Lo Brown was one such superstar during the hottest period in wrestling history. AC Julius Connor, born October 22, 1972, better known by his ring name D'Lo Brown. The name D'Lo Brown came as a reference to Connor's high school friend Darren Lewis, D. Lewis Lowe, Connor called him, who died of cancer. Connor asked Lewis's mother if he could use the name as a tribute to her son. Connor began his wrestling career in New Jersey as AC Animal. He then wrestled Earthquake in the WWE in 1994 under his given name as a jobber. This led to his first widely known accomplishment in Smoky Mountain Wrestling as he became the head of security for the Gangsters. When the Gangsters left SMW in 1995, he signed a deal with the WWE and was sent to the Heartland Wrestling Association for more training while also continuing to make more appearances as a jobber on WWE television. Dilo also spent most of 1996 wrestling in Puerto Rico for the World Wrestling Council. Connor made his official WWF debut in 1997 as a member of Farouk's Nation of Domination heel stable debuting as one of the several nondescript people in suits that accompanied the group to the ring. During this time, his most notable moment was when Ahmed Johnson slammed him onto the roof of a car during Shotgun Saturday Night. His first televised match as a member of the nation was on the April 26, 1997 episode of Shotgun Saturday Night, as he, Crush and Savio Vega defeated Aldo Montoya, Steve Carino and Freddie Joe Floyd. On May 26, 1997, he had his first match on Monday Night Raw, which was called Raw is War at the time, defeating Bob the Spark Plug Holly. After the King of the Ring 1997, Farouk fired the rest of the nation's members except for D'Lo, who was later joined by Ahmed Johnson, later replaced by Rocky Maria, Kamen Mustafa and Mark Henry. In early 1998, the group turned on Farouk, allowing Maria, now going by the name The Rock, to assume leadership. During this period, Kama also changed his name to The Godfather and began betraying a pimp character. Dilo and Henry eventually turned on both Rock and Godfather separately before moving into a feud with The Rock before finally branching out as a moderately successful tag team, later turning face along the way. Prior to the face turn, Brown had started wrestling with a chest protector, supposedly for a torn pectoral muscle, sustained in a match against Dan the Beast Severn. Instead, he used the chest protector to his advantage, making his finishing move, the lowdown, more effective. In 1998, he fused with x -Pup over the WWF European Championship. His career peaked when he held the European and Intercontinental Championship simultaneously during a feud with Jeff Jarrett and Mark Henry. This feat has only been duplicated by Jeff Jarrett, Kurt Angle and Rob Van Dam, all of whom became world champions in some form later in their careers. Brown was involved in inadvertently ending the career of Droz on October 5th, 1999, when a running powerbomb was botched due to Droz's baggy shirt. The match was filmed for the October 7th edition of SmackDown, but was never aired. Droz suffered a severe neck injury, rendering him a quadriplegic. During an interview with Title Match Wrestling, D'Lo Brown dispelled a popular rumour that a fan had thrown an object into the ring which caused him to slip and badly injure Darren Drozdov. D'Lo took responsibility for botching the move, stating that the accident could have happened to any wrestler he had been in the ring with that night. He also said the accident caused him to wrestle differently and to second guess every move he performed in the ring from that day forward. Drozdov has maintained that he does not blame Brown for his injuries and he believes that the incident was an accident. During the rest of the year and into some of the next, Brown became an ally of former fellow Nation member, The Godfather, emulating his dress and walking motions. The teaming ended when Brown turned heel on The Godfather. Brown then formed a tag team in July 2000 with Chaz named Lowdown. The team mostly wrestled on Sunday Night Heat and WWE Jacked Slash Metal. Shortly after the team forged, Tiger Ali Singh joined the team to become their manager. The tag team then became dressed towards the ring in Sikh attire and took on a gimmick very similar to Tiger's. 
The team was removed from WWF TV in January 2001 after Singh was injured. According to Brown, it was the lowest point in his career. Shaz and Singh were later released by WWE, while Brown stayed in WWE's developmental territory, OVW. Notably, Brown wrestled future world champion Batista in a losing effort. Brown also spent six months in Puerto Rico wrestling for the International Wrestling Association, teaming with Glamour Boy Shane holding the IWA Tag Team titles. Brown returned to TV on the April 28, 2002 episode of Heat, losing to Eddie Guerrero. For the rest of the year, Brown mostly wrestled on Heat, did a little bit of a commentary on the show, and even started a brief feud with Raven. In late 2002, Theodore Long retired as WWE referee and managed D'Lo, who had complained about acts of racism during his matches. D'Lo started Long's group, Thuggin' and Buggin' Enterprises, which eventually turned into a group of African Americans who worked an angle in which they felt they were victims of racism and were being held down by the white man. With Long's managerial services, D'Lo Brown went undefeated for several weeks. Brown faced Booker T in a losing effort on the February 10, 2003 episode of Raw. His involvement with Thuggin' and Buggin' Enterprises was brought to a close when footage was shown on the February 16th episode of Heat of Theodore Long kicking D'Lo Brown to the curb and introducing his replacement Rodney Mack. He was then released from his WWE contract on February 14, 2003. A stint with the upstart TNA wrestling promotion presented Brown with the opportunity to rejuvenate his career and he seized said opportunity turning in several great performances against then NWA champion AJ Styles. Brown was instrumental in helping the young star develop into the great performer he became, something he does not get enough credit for. Together they delivered several quality bouts in the summer of 2003. Although he failed to wrestle the title away from Styles, that was not a bad thing. After all, Brown was a quality wrestler but TNA really needed to focus on the future and Styles was clearly it. After an NWA Tag Team Championship reign with Apollo, Brown exited the company in 2004. He would return years later as an agent, working behind the scenes to develop young talent. In 2008, Brown made a brief return to WWE as an on-screen character. A trial earned him a spot back on the roster, but WWE creative had little for him to do. After appearing on Raw a handful of times, including a match against Santino Morella, in which Beth Phoenix got involved, he was gone from WWE again, never to return. At least not yet. In September 2009, Connor was re-signed by TNA as their lead agent. Additionally, D'Lo is in charge of talent development and acquisitions heading up the TNA Gut Check program. On the March 7, 2013 episode of Impact Wrestling, Brown attacked Kurt Angle and revealed himself as the vice president of Aces and Eights, turning heel in the process. Three days later at lockdown, Brown interfered in Angle's steel cage match against fellow Aces and Eights member Wes Briscoe, costing Angle the match. Later that evening, the president of the Aces and Eights was revealed to be Bully Ray. Brown wrestled his first televised match in four years on the May 2nd episode of Impact Wrestling, losing to Kurt Angle in an I Quit match. As a result of his loss, Brown was demoted to a prospect the following week. On July 17th, Brown announced his release from TNA. Today, after 25 years in the wrestling business, Dealer has worked with them all. From The Rock to AJ Styles, from Mark Henry to Kurt Angle, he is still wrestling very occasionally in independent shows, but his main passion is helping the younger generation. He is now working as a producer with Impact Wrestling, with stars such as Michael Elgin, Brian Cage, Tessa Blanchard, Eddie Edwards, Willie Mack, Richard Swan. And with that, I'd like to say thank you, D-Lo, for the memories, and thank you for listening, guys. If you want to hear more stories like these guys, please like and subscribe to the channel, and comment below on who you'd like to see next. That's all from me. And I'll be back next time with more The Story Of.